Mario! The Nintendo 64 arrived at a pivotal time in the history of video games. It was 1996, and the games industry had never been more competitive. Essentially, you had three choices for home console entertainment, the Sony PlayStation, the Sega Saturn, or the Nintendo 64. Despite outperforming bold rival Sega, the N64 ultimately fell well short of the PlayStation, achieving just a third of the PS1's final sales. But, as with so many things Nintendo, history smiles fondly on the N64. After all, the N64 sales were not weak. They had a passionate audience and a vast library of phenomenal games. But what are the games that kicked it all off? Two. Two launch titles in the US. So in an effort to make this video longer than three minutes, I will also be covering the European and Japanese launch titles. Plus, for a bonus treat, we'll also be looking at the Japan-exclusive 64DD add-ons launch titles, of which there are also only two. Are you ready? Then let's do this. Beginning as an early title for the Super Famicom and a launch title for the SNES, Pilot Wings is a long-running Nintendo franchise where you earn pilot licenses in different disciplines, with the series essentially acting as a showcase of what new hardware can do. Fast forward to 1996, and we got Pilot Wings 64. The game is vibrant and colourful, the music catchy, and the character models have aged. Oh yeah. No thank you. The vehicles you can master this time around are the hand glider, where you fly through rings and land on a target, the rocket belt, where you must pop a balloon before landing on a target, and the gyrocopter, where you must fire missiles at unsuspecting locals and commence devastating bombing runs. Only joking, you actually had to fly through some rings and then land on the runway, which I did a couple of times, only to realise I could roll along the floor like a bad car and so decided to go on a little adventure. Also, the crashes are equal parts horrifying and hilarious. <laughs> Pilot Wing 64 was very positively received by critics, earning an average of 87% according to the reviews listed on Wikipedia. Now hold on just a minute, who's this handsome fella? Well, it's only Yoshiharu Habu, professional shogi player and chess FIDE master. Perhaps you haven't heard about his being the first professional shogi player to be awarded Japan's People of Honor award after a career spanning 99 major title and 45 tournament victories. Maybe you also didn't know that he's the only person to simultaneously hold seven major professional shogi titles at the same time. I bet you didn't, so don't be so quick to judge this man mountain on his beautiful yukata alone, okay? Saikyo Habu Shogi was one of three Japanese N64 launch titles, and I was very bad at it. So bad, in fact, that it took me multiple attempts to even make it into a game successfully. Essentially a Japanese variant of chess, it took me far too long to realise what Shogi actually was, and after several poorly executed moves, I was confronted with numerous angry text boxes whenever I attempted to manoeuvre a piece until my king was checkmated. Reviews are, unsurprisingly, very difficult to come by, but 15 GameFAQ users voted it to be 63%, so we'll go with that. Part of a multimedia project that essentially acted as an experiment to see if Lucasfilm could monetize such an endeavor on the same level as they would a film, Star Wars Shadows of the Empire launched alongside the N64 in Europe. Set between the events of Episodes 5 and 6, players assume the dapper role of Dash Rendar as he attempts to help Luke Skywalker rescue Princess Leia and have a dick measuring contest with Han Solo about who can care less. It starts off rather well, with you piloting a snowspeeder and taking down AT-ATs and ATSTs, though the camera when shooting your tow cable is unwieldy at best. These camera issues only worsen when you take control of Dash himself in either first or third person view as you slide across scenery and awkwardly shoot in the rough direction of enemies. 
enemies. Don't get me wrong, it looks good, and for a game that attempts to do so much with its vehicular and on-foot sections, it largely succeeds. But Shadows of the Empire had a troubled development cycle, and in places it really shows. 74% according to game rankings, and fun fact, if you beat the game on medium or higher, you get an additional ending scene where in response to Luke and Co mourning his apparent death, Dash says it's good to be remembered as a martyr without actually being dead, wouldn't you say? What a bastard. <laughs> There's a part of me that feels this should be very illegal. What is there I could possibly tell you about Super Mario 64? One of the most significant and influential games of all time, the title was the first Mario game to feature 3D gameplay, has inspired generations of players and developers, and is still enjoyed slash dissected slash speedrun speed runned to this day. Also known as the game all the meme music is from. <laughs> Mario arrives at Princess Peach's castle under the pretense of free cake and maybe a little something else if you know what I'm saying, boy! <laughs> but quickly discovers Bowser's been up to his dirty tricks again, and so he must go from painting to painting, collecting stars to eventually confront the big spiky shell man himself. Now, I will say, as someone whose only previous exposure to playing Super Mario 64 came from the launch games video we did about the DS, that the controls can take some getting used to. That's not to say they're bad, but I didn't have an N64 growing up like the cool kids did, and I don't have that laser-focused muscle memory, so I did have a couple of great falls. That being said, I was hugely charmed by it. The colours, the music, the joyous simplicity of it all cannot be denied. It earned an impressive 96% on game rankings, and I think that's more than justified. Oh, look how here he comes, the rascal. Turok is a dinosaur hunter. A dinosaur hunter that uses a knife and a bow and arrow. Time period appropriate, perhaps, but boring. Okay, Google, when do you get the guns in Turok Dinosaur Hunt? Oh, right now, apparently. Hang on just a second. Turok Dinosaur Hunter. So Turok is a Native American warrior who must stop the evil campaigner from conquering the universe with an ancient and powerful weapon. Okay, so maybe not totally historically accurate then. Now, I can only apologise for the masterclass in shoddy game playing that you're witnessing, for you see, the way the N64 controller mapped to my Xbox controller meant that I was steering with the left stick and moved with the right stick, something my brain just couldn't get used to. As long as I didn't encounter any jumping puzzles, I'd be fine. Oh, good. It's really quite great though, both gameplay-wise and graphically. While there are repeated textures and dense fog in places, it's still an impressive visual treat, with enemy and creature animations proving quite realistic. The constant cougar noises in the soundtrack were a little distracting, but I had more than enough firepower to deal with them if they actually ended up existing. 86% on game rankings. Released exclusively in Japan, the 64DD, or Disk Drive slash Dynamic Drive if you want to get serious about this, was a Nintendo 64 add-on that allowed it to play magnetic discs. One of the launch games for the 64DD was Mario Artist Paint Studio, a sort of activity centre for kids. Thankfully, the dutiful work of 64DD games preserver Luigi Blood allowed me to play this in English, unfortunately. However, I didn't have a cursor, which made painting and navigating menus rather difficult. For example, here's my best interpretation of beloved Nintendo mascot, Mario! Isn't he beautiful? Outside of drawing, you're also able to watch 3D movies before drawing all over them. There's an aquatic scene, one with dinosaurs, and my personal favourite, Mars. Just look at this little guy go. I attempted to colour one of them in, but it got progressively filthier looking as it went, and oh no, it's much worse in motion. Additionally, there's even a crude animation studio where you can stitch together stills you've crafted. The music slapped Serious Richard. <laughs> but there was no way I was going to navigate the menus without a cursor. 75% according to the limited reviews I could find online. And here we are, I've absolutely saved the best until last. Yeah. Doshin the Giant is a god game where you control a giant toddler who can terraform the earth. 
Stamp down craters to form lakes, raise up mountains by humping the ground, pick up people's houses and then put them down again because you haven't learned the controls. It really lets you do it all. I obviously had no idea what was going on, but it was the absolute peak of what the 64DD add-on could ever offer, in my opinion. And if you ever get bored, you can always try to stamp on your minions and watch them go to heaven. Why not also turn red and angry and slap massive waves of devastating energy across the land? Oh, just like Casino Royale, that. If you do everything right, the residents might build a statue of you, but I didn't get that far, and you know it. A very nice 69% according to game rankings, and its 2002 GameCube re-release peaked at number one in the Japanese charts. Don't underestimate the appeal of giant yellow toddlers, apparently. And that 69% brings the total average score of the N64's launch lineup to 79%. And there we have it, every Nintendo 64 launch title played and reviewed, sort of, in 2021. Were there any among them that were your favourites? Let me know in the comments below. Why not follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with future videos in this series? Also like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!